Today, the goodies have arrived. Now it's time to get to work. Ian and Jesse lay out the interior of their hybrid tow beast, Suburban Gorilla. Plus, these plumes can mean only one thing, diesel demons. Welcome to Extreme 4x4 and the home stretch for the old Suburban Gorilla. Now, all the cutting and grinding is finished and the body just came back from our local Rhino lining dealer, coated inside and out. This has been a really long project, starting with a thrashed 87 Chevy Suburban, turning it into an ultimate tow rig. And today, we're going to take care of a lot of things on our list, especially inside the body. Now this has been a huge project with a lot of custom tips and tricks, and the best thing is that after today, the body will be ready to go on the frame. Perfect. Want to grab the forklift? Yeah. Whoa, whoa, not so jerky. All right, you're clear. <laughs> now the inside of the gorilla is pretty big and today we're gonna to be taking care of the wiring harness and the rest of the interior goodies are gonna fit inside the truck. And a great way to do that is to lay everything out on the floor. We simply measured the truck and this big box here is the floor. This little rectangle up here is basically the firewall. We'll have one wiring harness feed to go out to run our headlights in the front. This little piece up here is gonna be the part that runs up the B pillar and then out the roof to the off-road lights, back to the center of the roof for the dome lights and anything else, and then of course, a feed out to the back and across to run both tail lights. And by laying everything out and building your harness this way, you won't have to be crawling all over the truck, bumping your head, hurting yourself. And plus, with this many parts, a plan of attack is an absolute necessity. So the layout begins. Headlights up front and a fan for the radiator. Plus two off-road lights on the bush guard, a trans cooler with a built-in fan. A lot of accessories means a lot of power needed. So, a dual battery kit. The fuse block will be mounted behind the dash. Of course, gauges and switch panels, a GPS unit, power windows in each door, switch panels to control everything, roof mounted off road lights, tail lights, and the seven pin connector for the trailer. Of course, all work and no play is no fun at all. So, speakers for each door, subs in the rear, an amp for the subs, a backup camera and DVD player, three TV screens, and of course, a video game console. Now the harness for this truck is going to kind of be a hybrid between custom-made harness and pre-made harnesses. Now it's not that hard to do and when you have this much stuff to install it's almost a necessity. It's going to take a little bit more time. To control the regular stuff that comes in a truck like wipers and headlights we're going to use this painless performance universal 12 circuit harness and just install the fuse block up underneath the dash. We will then add additional power feeds and wiring for the other accessories like the GPS, the amps, the trailer wiring, and the off-road lights. To help with diagnosing problems later, we'll take out all the fuses and or relays, mark them on our schematics here for additional wiring from the harness, and then we'll mount the parts to the truck. Now the Urban Gorilla body kit comes with all the lights needed for a regular truck. Obviously headlights in the front, tail lights in the back, and marker lights in between. And hooking them up is pretty simple because the painless harness already has everything loomed together. But one thing you're going to have to remember, the front end of this truck is a fiberglass front end. And whenever you mount lights directly to a piece of fiberglass, you're going to want to add a ground wire into your harness because you can't just ground the light to the fiberglass, won't work. With a truck this big, cargo is a given, but when you run out of room on the inside, the only other option you have is in the bed, or in our case, up on the roof. This off-road unlimited Defender roof rack is made of 16 gauge, one inch tubing, and is pre-made for almost any truck out there. Plus, all of the rack systems come with these little light tabs on both front and rear. So we can go ahead and mount our Casey Highlight HIDs on the front, and then the ballast will be mounted somewhere underneath. Now I have to put that up there, but I'm too short to do it by myself. Thanks, ready? <laughs> Now 
Now you can easily see how a floor laid out like this lets you sort the wires into the sections of the truck. Now this back end, all we did was run the taillight wires plus the wires for the winch control. Now the taillights themselves will mount into the body and we'll use removable connectors to hook them up in case we ever need to replace one. And then all we have to do is go through this entire pile of parts, put power to what needs power, ground to what needs ground, and then we can put it all in the truck. With the harness coming together, we can continue to mount more parts onto the truck, like the taillights. Find out who your friends are based on who shows up to help. Now the rest of the audio in this truck is pretty intense, but what else would you expect for the Suburban Gorilla? And all the power feeds are ran, and it all starts with an in-dash Icon TV 4100 DVD player. Now not only is this an AM, FM radio, and CD player, it also will work as a video source for the rest of our gear. Now from there, it's going to travel through a switcher into a motorized 7-inch screen for the passenger to watch when you want to watch a DVD. This can switch between either the DVD, the backup camera, or even the game console that we put inside. Now we also had to run wires all through the harness, down the floor, up the B-pillar, into the back. Now Icon has won more awards than any other video manufacturer in the market. So in the back seat, you're just gonna love watching twin overhead widescreen ultra high resolution monitors with built-in dome lights. And then back here, last part of the harness, it's the backup camera we talked about. All we gotta do now is put all this stuff in the truck. A lot of stuff. Stay tuned to Extreme to see the dash and headliner come together. But up next, meet an engine builder who's taking diesels to the next level. You know, we're breaking some serious ground with our Suburban Gorilla here, the ultimate tow rig plus good trail truck all in one package. And that package starts with a twin turbo Duramax diesel. But what good is a diesel if you can't have a little fun with it? For those that want some roar and rumble in their racing, then the Diesel Hot Rod Association has got what you need. Pure diesel power. No gassers for me. All diesel. As one of the top diesel truck builders in the nation, Dan Scheid knows all about the thrill. When the power really hits the ground, you know, and you let out on the clutch and the boost is up, and the smoke's shooting up in the air, it's great. Doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> Since 2001, his Dodge Puller has dominated the modified sledding class. It's built specifically for truck pulling. We went into it, modified the motor, we modified the transmission and rear end where that uh, we'd be capable of utilizing it for truck pulling. Weighing 8,000 pounds, his machine needs the power to pull the 36,000 pound sled. Currently in the vicinity of around 1,200 horsepower and around 1,800 foot-pounds of torque. This is our power plant for this unit. So here we have a 5.9 coming. We're looking at twin turbos, water injection, high performance fuel injection system and injectors, specially designed uh, turbos to uh, build the kind of boost we want to we want to develop and uh, get us down the track. His son-in-law pilots this diesel beast with a hand throttle. That's more so we can get a better feel on the motor, on how the motor's coming up and when the boost is coming on. And uh, you can do that better with your hand than what you can with your foot, in our opinion. In qualifying, the team had a scare. We're trying this new set of tires and uh, a little too aggressive for the front end parts we got at this time, so we're going to have to build her up a little better. Hopefully we can make them work. They got it to work in the finals and pulled off a winning run of 347.09 feet. All the pullers joined in and helped me get it back together. We got it together, got it braced up, and, and that was a wonderful pass. Yeah, baby! 
Dan Scheid's latest project is a diesel rail. It's very unusual. There's only probably about three or four in the United States. This dragster blows the diesel image to bits. Most of the time, people think that a diesel engine is sluggish and uh, a slow acceleration speed for it, but that's uh, not totally the case. At present time, we're probably looking at uh, somewhere in the vicinity of around 1,300 horsepower and around 1,800 foot-pounds of torque. We're not in the top fuel category by any means. Tony Schumacher isn't shaking at this dragster's six-second runs, but Dan's motivation for building it was a noble one. To show the consumer what we can do with the diesel engine and the type of performance that we can actually get out of the out of the diesel engine. And the next generation of racers like what they see. Awesome. Diesels now are awesome. Welcome back to Extreme 4x4. Jesse and I are making progress on the Gorilla one wire at a time. And while she fabs up a mount for the roof light ballots, my custom harness okay, we're going to the truck now. is ready to go in. all that wiring inside the truck, I'm going to be working on the components in the doors. These are fiberglass both inside and out and they come with the hardtop body kit. All you have to do is figure out where you're going to mount everything. So things like the speakers and the window switches, it's all your choice. But things like the window regulators and the door handles, that's when it gets a little bit more precise. With the location chosen for the speaker and the inside handle, I'll trim the fiberglass. On the outside of the door, I'll do the same for the hinges and the handle. The power window regulator is next. It mounts in the center of the glass opening. The last thing is the bear claw latch that mounts to the outside of the doors and connects to the handles. All right, we got a nice clean look. Now all we got to do is weld the hinges to the truck and the doors are all ready to go on. Gonna hold. Sweet. Three more to go. Now if the front door is in place, you can start to check the clearance for your dashboard. Now the Urban Gorilla kit comes with a complete fiberglass dash, but like most guys who build these trucks, we're going to come in here and build our own custom one just to sort of finish off the interior. Our dash is a pretty simple design and will be made out of pre-bent exhaust tubing. The upper dash tube will be our starting point and a piece of 16 gauge steel attached to the truck. The lower tube will be further from the firewall to give the dash an angle. Oh, that hurts. Once all the tubes are tacked together, we can pull it out later and weld it completely. Now once all this tube structure is welded, we can remove the dash just by pulling the bolts out of this piece of 16 gauge steel here and the fasteners at the bottom of the down tubes. But if you want to work behind the dash on some wiring or in our case install some gauges, we made these fill panels out of these pieces of aluminum. All they'll do is bolt in place on some tabs. And when you want to work on one spot, just pull them out, work away. The real custom piece to go in this body is going to be the headliner. The rhino lining looks awesome and a lot of people think about fabric when it comes to headliners. But the curve on this roof is perfect for an idea I had. I'm going to build a custom headliner with aluminum sheet and 8 inch aluminum flat stock. It should look pretty sick by the time I'm done. So stick around because that's next along with gauges in the dash. Welcome back to Extreme. We're headed down to the tech center into the muscle car shop where they have a shear big enough to cut our aluminum for the headliner. That'll leave our mark. Really, there's nothing to building an aluminum headliner. Ow, hot aluminum shavings in my bra. 
Sorry, guys. There goes the ratings. <laughs> we'll even leave these fasteners exposed to make it look even cooler. Now this aluminum fill panel that will bolt into our dash is going to be filled with autometer carbon fiber gauges. Now not only do these gauges light up with an intense light that the color is changeable depending on the interior of your vehicle, they also just look great and they're really going to match the steering wheel that we put inside the Gorilla. Now we got full electric gauges so all we have to do is install the sensors in the engine and it'll be easy to monitor and plus to make install even easier we're going to use Painless Performance's gauge wiring kit. All we got to do is hook this up and we'll have one plug to hook up in this harness. Alright, the headliner's in, the seats are in, and I've already installed one of the overhead screens. Now these Icon TV monitors have a bracket that'll go up inside the roof, and then another bracket that'll mount onto that, and then the screen will pop right in and sandwich right in between the roof. All of a sudden, there you go. You've got TVs in your ceiling, dude! <laughs> Now the front of our sub speaker box is made out of three quarter inch MDF and we're going to skin it with this aluminum so it ends up matching the headliner. So there you go guys, the whole interior to the Suburban Gorilla is pretty much done and it looks awesome. I mean for only spending 60 bucks on exhaust tubing, the dash is perfect, especially with all those extra components in there. And that aluminum headliner, Jess, when you first told me about it, I thought you were crazy, but I gotta say you pulled it off, thing looks great. And now the screens are in place, it just, it just sets the whole truck off. And the coolest thing about those screens is, is you can switch between video sources like that, bam, watch whatever you want, even Extreme 4x4, live. Almost live. No live, I see. No live. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs>